And so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and go into sharing screens and uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and show you how to speed up your computer. And then we're going to go into some Word and then do a little PowerPoint so you can actually start to see the power of this computer. So I'm going to go ahead and share screens right now. And what I suggest is just sit back and uh, just listen versus trying to uh, follow along because this is probably a lot of new information. Uh, so I don't have competition with JAWS. I'm going to actually keep him suspended. So the first thing I'm going to do is Windows M, which takes me to my desktop. And what you want to do is change your computer setup so it actually is working in highest performance. So you're going to hit your Windows key and you type in PC. And this PC populates. And what you're going to do is hit your Applications key and you're going to down arrow to, yep, I love it. My computer just did an update and I love it how it disconnects on that. And down arrow to Properties and your Properties open. Now I'm going to take my mouse so visually you can actually see where I'm going to go. I'm going to go over to this tree view. But my cursor is already in the middle of my page over to the right hand side. And if you ever need to get to the left, to quickly go there is going to be Alt D. Before I do that, if you've ever wanted to know what kind of capacity your computer has, it's right there in the middle. And what you do is you turn on your JAWS cursor to access that, and that is Caps Lock. P. So I'm going to just go ahead and turn my jaws back on. And then I'm going to do caps lock P. So you're going to actually see how the mouse moves. And then you up arrow. Okay. So the point is on the jaws cursor is when you get to a page that may be more visual than actual text, because if I tabbed through this, it would not give me all the information that I need. But the JAWS cursor always does. What you have to realize is the JAWS cursor is going to read from the left-hand side to the right-hand side of the page. But it's incredibly powerful, as you can see. Okay. And so forth. Now, you have to go back to your PC cursor in order to navigate around your page. So I'm going to actually caps lock semicolon to get back to my PC cursor. Good. And now I want to go ahead and actually Alt D. Okay, and I'm just going to hush him up. I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm just going to hit my tab key in order to get over to the left-hand side of my tree view. So I'm just going to tab now. And if I was to tab starting down in the middle of my page where I was at, it'd take like 10 tabs. Versus now, with an Alt D, it gets me to the top of the page, and I'm going to continue to tab across. Okay, now I'm over to the right-hand side. Now I'm on the. Now I'm switched back to the left-hand side. Advanced system settings. That's where you want to go, and you're going to hit Enter. Okay, I'm going to hush them up. I hit my Control key to always get JAWS stopped. Uh, gabbing, uh, because I can tell you what he's going to say and then what I'm going to tell you how to do. So you're under the performance settings and you want to hit enter to open that. Okay, now visual effects page. The default is uh, appearance or it's let Windows choose. I'm already going to tell you your Windows is not smart enough to figure out what your screen reader needs. So what we do is we go through and we actually tell the computer how to perform the best with screen readers, braille displays, and everything else we need. So down arrow and make sure that it says adjust for best performance, and then you need to Alt A to apply it. If you make a change and you do not do an Alt A to apply, it won't stick and it won't hold. So now I'm, I'm going to hit escape out of mine because mine is already adjusted. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and escape out of that also. Okay, and then I'm going to Alt F4 is the default key for closing everything. Now, when I give a combination keyboard command like Alt F4, 
What I'm saying is you need to go ahead and take your left hand, sit on the alt on the right side of your space bar, and don't let go of it. And then you're going to hit your uh, F4. When I say alt tab, you may have five windows open. If you sit on that alt on the right hand side, your left hand can actually tab through all the open programs. And when you hear the program you want, you let go of it. So let me show you how to do that and I'll alt tab right back here. So I'm pressing down on the alt with my right hand and I'm gonna hit my tab key. Okay. That's what we're doing today. Yep, and zoom. And actually I'm gonna open that and I'm gonna go ahead and alt V to turn off my video. Okay, and I'm gonna sit on my alt and I'm going to continue to tab. Okay, and I'm just hitting my tab and going through, once I find where I want, then I let go of my alt. Now I can alt F4, so I'm my left hand is sitting on the alt, and uh, my, excuse me, I said that backwards, right hand is sitting on the alt, left hand is going up to F4 and closing. Beautiful. Now, this one's huge. If you're hitting your start key, and things do not populate when you're typing into it, like, Word, word, anything, okay, hit escape. It's because your indexing is not on. When you buy a computer, indexing is never on. You actually have to go in and you have to select it. Now let me tell you what indexing is. So say you're standing in a library and you have an earthquake and all the books fall off the shelves. Indexing is someone coming in and picking up all those books and arranging them in alphabetical order or whatever order they need to be in so you can easily go in and find things really fast. That's what indexing is. So if everything is indexed on your computer, you can hit that Windows key and you can go anywhere. So I'm gonna hit my Windows key, I N D. Now I can already tell you, if you have difficulties uh, pulling up that search, you can go ahead and continue typing E, X, and more, but you don't have to once your indexing is on. I'm gonna hit enter on indexing options. Okay, now my indexing, and if you're visual, you can actually see that I have almost 700,000 uh, indexed here, and I have several drives. If it is not indexed, it's gonna have maybe three or 5,000 there. So now your information is, you need, no, it's gonna be in the hundreds of thousands. You're gonna Alt M to modify this. So I'm sitting on my Alt and hitting M. Okay, and I'm just going to hush them up. And what you need to do is down, now I have a lot of external drives also because I have a lot of gigabytes of, of storage. But anyway, you're, you may not have all these uh, in drives. So I'm just going to down arrow to my C. Windows C, that's what you want indexed. So what you do is you hit space bar on that. And, is, and don't do it now because it will really slow down your computer and it will even negatively impact this Zoom meeting. But you hit enter on that and you, if you're visual, you can immediately see your computer indexing at the top left-hand corner of your indexing options. So when this meeting is done, index your computer because a lot of people's computers are not indexed and that will make a massive difference. Okay, I'm going to immediately go back to my tech training notes to make sure I have all the most important ones. Ah, another incredibly critical one, emptying your temp folder. And actually, you want to do this every day. It will actually even speed up your internet. So this is your app data temp folder. So I will explain more of that once we get into it. So you're going to sit on your windows and you're going to hit R for your run dialog box. Okay. I'm going to just hush them up. It's percent temp percent, as in shift five, which is the percent sign, T E M P, shift five again for another percent sign, and then you hit enter. Now, when you open this, you are going to have so many items in here. Because what your app data temp folder does is anything you open, anything you do gets logged here. It's like walking through your house with dirty shoes. The only way to clean your house is you start vacuuming. 
this is what we're doing. Basically, think of vacuuming your computer, cleaning it up. This has one of the most major negative effects on your computer. The larger this gets, uh, the slower your computer gets. So what you want to do is control A to select it all. Okay. And then you want to sit on your shift and hit delete. Shift delete is a permanent delete. If you just hit your delete, it's going to move it into the recycle bin. Your computer's still going to run slowly. And then of course you have to go to your recycle bin and clean it. So now I'm going to sit on my shift. I'm going to hit my delete key. And it asks you, are you sure you want to do this? And you hit enter on yes. Okay. Now I'm going to hush this up. You are going to get a dialog box that says file in use. You can't delete this. No, you cannot delete something that you are actively using. So I'm going to alt tab to the file in use because I interrupted it. So it lost focus of it and lost focus means, okay, even though visually you can see that file in use, it is not in focus. When I alt tab to it, you're going to actually see these words file in use darken. That's how you know it is in focus. A person with talking software knows it's going to be in focus because they're going to hear it. So I'm going to sit on my alt and I'm going to tab to that file in use. And I keep going. File in use. Okay. Once that, and I'm already going to tell you, kids will do that and they'll like, okay, I'm, I'm listening for the file in use, but they didn't hear it. So what I always tell them, it popped up in the background, alt tab to it. So that is actually, I'm really glad that that did that on me. So now I'm going to alt A because you want to select the box that says, do this for all current items. And then you alt S to skip. Okay. And that is immediately going to speed up your computer. Okay. And now once again, I'll F4 and close out of your temp folder. The next two critical ones, and you can, you can set this up to automatically do this is going to be disk cleanup and optimization. And you want to do them once a week. So I'm hitting my windows key and typing D I S K. Okay. And when you open it, and I'm not going to hit enter on this because I don't want to take time to do it. But when you open it, it's going to have check boxes on it, and you want to check every single box and delete it. I'm going to hit escape right now. The next thing is you want to optimize your computer. So you hit your Windows key and you type in OPT, defragment and optimize drives. You want to do this every week, and all of these items will keep your computer running really fast. I'm going to hit escape and get out. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to go in to Word and actually go over Word commands. My Word is open, and if I do Windows 1, and actually I want to show you that. So the desktop is very powerful. Now, visually, if you're watching the taskbar is at the bottom, how we get there really fast is Windows T. So I'm going to sit on my Windows and hit T. Okay, and it tells you where you're at. If I Windows 1, it's immediately going to open Word for me. So as all you have to do is count. Now I have two Word documents open, so don't let it fool yourself when you move to the right. Okay, it's still Windows 1 that's going to open my Word. I'm going to right arrow again. Okay, so Firefox is Windows 2. So if I do Windows 2, it will instantly open Firefox. I move again and Windows 3 is going to be my File Explorer. File Explorer is also Windows E, so it doesn't really need to be pinned to your taskbar. Okay, Google Chrome, Windows 4. I think you're getting the idea, so I don't have to go all the way through these. But I'm going to do Windows 4 just so you can see how fast Chrome opens. I could hit enter here, but the point is you can be anywhere and Windows 4, and it will open Chrome. So I'm going to Windows 4, so Chrome will open. And there it is. Okay. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and close that. So I'm going to Alt F4 and close. Okay, so now, mouse, I'm going to put it down here to the bottom right-hand corner. This is called your system tray. To get there really fast is Windows B. Okay, your Chevron button, if you hit spacebar, you have all your other icons there. So I'm just going to hit space and open it. 
And to get up there is you up arrow, okay? And you can just up arrow and move through all of those items. I'm gonna hit escape one time. Okay, when the kids ask what time it is or what date, you wanna teach them the skills to do that themselves. So insert F12 tells you exactly the time. Insert F12 quickly. Okay, it tells you the date and the time. Now you also see ENG down in my bottom hand corner because I have quite a few different languages on my computer. So when children take foreign language classes, and that's a much more advanced lesson, there's actually a command to quickly go between all your languages also. But you can right arrow, okay? Keep in mind that was Windows B to get there. And of course, that's the biggest one, the internet access, how kids get to their internet access. So when they're going between home and school, they can quickly access their wireless. And of course, volume. The thing is, volume is already uh, on the laptops. It is up by their F keys and they can quickly adjust their volume. Okay, and Windows M and Windows D quickly get you to your S desktop. Same command, does this, uh, different commands does the same thing. So I'm going to do Windows M. Yeah, desktop. Okay, you can do first letter navigation. So if I wanted to go to JAWS. Oh yeah, already on JAWS. It's not going to repeat it again. Okay, and it moves around or you can use your arrow keys. Okay, now I'm going to Windows 1 and open Word. Okay, I have three monitors, so it's over to the left. So if I do Windows, Shift, and right arrow, it's going to move it into view. And there we are. Okay, so these are the Zoom commands that everybody got. I'm going to Control N for a new document. Okay, now we're going to go over some incredibly important features. Right off the bat, if you're visual, you're seeing, hey, that navigation pane is over there. Okay, if I do Control F, okay, and this is how you close it quickly, Control Space, C to close, okay? JAWS or any screen reader really likes the whole image of the window. Now, if you open Word and you only see partial of that open, you want a Windows up arrow to maximize your window. Uh, it's, and then of course, as they're in the classroom and the teachers, the sighted teachers moving around, they can also see the full window. Sometimes our kids open it and it's only like a two by two window. Windows up arrow will maximize. Alt space will also maximize. So for whatever reason, if the windows up arrow doesn't do it, uh, your alt space and then X would maximize. You can already see mine's maximized. So I do not have that option. But if you can't close something, Alt F4 is not working, you can also close it that way. That is one of those really great older commands. Okay, so the next big thing is our, our students have to write papers. Well, it's not just our kids, all kids. They're either MLA or APA format. APA is the <clears throat> most popular one in colleges. A lot of prep high schools use it. MLA is typically the standard in high school. So the commands I'm gonna go over apply to both. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have a one inch margin. So we need to go to your page layout with Alt P. M for margins. I'm just going to hush him up. And you want normal. Mine's in centimeters. Yours is actually going to say one inch all around because most people don't have the metric system on their computer. It doesn't matter. All you have to listen to is normal because normal is one inch top and bottom, left and right, and you just want to hit enter on that to make sure it's normal. And it is. That is the default that we set up. You want to control two for double space, so sit on your control and hit two. Okay, and what's nice about that is control one immediately goes back to single space. Listen to what your computer is telling you. So insert F tells you your font, and your spacing and all other valuable information you need. So let's listen, insert F. Okay. And it told you double space, it told you times through Roman 12, 
Now the default, when you actually open Word, is Calibri 11 multi-spacing. Well, um, you know, that is not the standard any place. So this is how you set up your defaults of Word. And of course, to change your font and style and size at any time. So my right hand is sitting on the control key and my left hand is going up to uh, the D. So control D. Okay, if you're visual, you can actually see many fonts on here. And that has to do with the foreign languages that I have on here. But the font for English is Times New Roman Regular 12. So you are going to type T-I-M, you down arrow to Times New Roman and hit enter, and then you tab to the font size. And I'm just tabbing through. Okay, as soon as you have your default set, you're going to Alt-D, Alt D is the default, Alt D. And I'm gonna hush him up. And basically the next dialog box is asking, do you want to do it just for this document or for the normal template? You're gonna hear that a lot. So if you ever mess up your normal template, it's gonna say, do you wanna resave your normal template? Always hit escape when you do that. And that occurs, mistakes and errors occur on your computer based on all the copying and pasting. Of course, you're using keyboard commands. So things can go wrong all the time. So never re-change over that normal template. Down the road, I'll actually show you how to rebuild the normal template because we typically have to do that several times a year. But you do want to set for all documents based on the normal template, and you do that with all A. Okay, because I've hit double spacing on here, I'm not going to hit enter because my default is already set up correctly. But you would want to hit enter right here and now you will have Times New Roman 12. I'm gonna hit escape and get out of this box. The next one is you need to change your spacing, and that is Alt O and P. Now, I'm giving you older commands because they are so much faster. I've been doing this for 30 years, so I grew up with the first Apple II that was out, and I grew up with every computer and learned the commands along the way. And I'm always teaching the faster way to do this. If you had to go up into your ribbon with your Alt key, it would take probably four times as many commands to get there. So these are the faster commands. Now, to get into your paragraphing styles, you're going to Alt O and then hit P. Now I'm going to do it, and you can hear. Okay. And it will tell you you're using the older commands. Doesn't matter. Okay, my defaults are already set up correctly, but the two items that you need to change are your spacing after and your line spacing. So you're going to do Alt F. I'll F again. And it's going to say 8PT. You just hit 0 and then you tab to your line spacing. Okay, yours is going to say multi spacing. So you're going to hit S for single. Now, my, mine says double spacing right now because I did a control 2 for the MLA and the APA formatting but you want to hit S for single and you tab off once. Once again, you set your default with Alt D and the same thing. It's going to ask you whether you want to do it for just this document or for all documents. So we do Alt D. Alt D. And once again, you're going to Alt A for all documents based on the normal template and enter. And then your paper is set up for correct formatting for all the work in school. I'm hitting escape to get out. Okay, so I have double spacing on, but the next most important thing about paper writing is going into your header. So what you wanna do is Alt V to view and H for header. So Alt V and H for heading. I need to write a line that is move my cursor to the right hand side and I'm going to do a control R. I'm going to type in my last name and then I want to automatically insert my page number and I do that with Alt 
I, U. All I. And I hit U. The default is right alignment. As soon as I hit enter in there, my page number is going to automatically insert into the page and I hit enter. Okay. What's great about this is it actually reads everything in this text now, which it didn't before. So even if I write 100 pages, it's going to automatically number all my pages correctly. Now let's say I wanted to do a footer. Some classes don't want the heading up at the top, but they want a footer and they want the page number in the middle of the page. So now I'm just going to down arrow. You're gonna, not going to do both. You're going to do one or the other. If you're writing an MLA or an APA paper, it's always this default. But if you're in class, maybe it's a science paper, the science teacher wants your page numbers down at the bottom. So you control E. Once again, you all I U, so you all I hit U, and you hit C for center, tab off, and enter, and your page number automatically gets inserted at the bottom of your page. You're going to hit escape and get out. Okay? Now you're back in your page. You want to type your first and your last name for your heading. So we just finished the header. Now we're going to do the heading, first and last name. And then you're going to hit enter. Now visually, you can already see this is double spaced. You're going to type in your teacher's name. Hit enter. Type in your subject. Okay, enter. Now we always do the date with Alt and D, and then we just hit enter. But now you're going to need to go down to the special date that is required for MLA or APA papers. So now we're going to do Alt N and then D. Okay, now like I said, I'm hushing them up. You're in the date and time box. So for all work and when you're single spacing, you're just going to hit enter here. But we need to go down eight times to the correct date for MLA or APA papers. I'm going to go down eight times. Okay, it's the full number, the full month, and the full year. And you're going to hit enter. And now you have a perfect heading. You're going to hit enter one time. You need to center your title with control E. And you're going to type in your title. You're now going to hit enter. And you need to left align to move that cursor back to the left with control L. Okay, and now we need to insert a whole bunch of text just so we can move around and do formatting. So I'm actually going to do a command to insert a whole bunch of text. I want to do three paragraphs, six sentences, right paren, and I hit enter. Okay, and it instantaneously gives me enough information uh, on my page. So now I'm actually down in page two. Visually, you can actually see my header is Robinson 2. It does not matter how many pages I have. You'll always have your last name and the page number. I'm now going to move up one paragraph at a time. My left hand is sitting on the control key and my right hand is hitting up arrow one at a time and that will allow me to jump a paragraph at a time. Okay. Again. And now I'm at the very top of my paragraphs. I need to tab one time for indent. I'm tabbing one time, it'll move me 0.5. Okay? And now I'm going to control down arrow to my next paragraph. Once again, I'm going to tab in one time. Okay? And what you want to do is tell the kids to, when you're teaching this, is to keep going over the same commands. Control down arrow. I'm going to hush them up, hit tab one time. Okay? And now all my paragraphs are indented. Now I can control up arrow back to my first paragraph. Okay, and I'm going to hush them up. Let's say I wanted to select this paragraph and make it a special font or color. And this is just going over, I don't know, well, you might want to uh, highlight a whole paragraph. That, that The point is I'm going to show you how to select the whole paragraph at one time. Control, shift, and down arrow. And now it has selected the whole paragraph. Let's say I need to highlight this. All the kids typically need to highlight words. You can change your schemes. 
to actually represent what this is. And you do insert all S. And I'm on classic attributes, which will actually read all that. I highly suggest changing to proofreading attributes and font. If you know you need color in there, you can add that also. And kid, I let kids decide. It will actually give you different feedback. But when the students are editing, they really need to be in proofreading mode. Okay. Now, if you're gonna use font color, you wanna down arrow twice to the attributes, font, and color, and you're gonna hear how much feedback you get. Okay, and hit enter on that. Okay, now let's go ahead and highlight this. Alt-H to home and I to highlight. Here we go, Alt-H. I. Okay, I'm gonna hush them up. Yellow is typically the default. You can right or left arrow to whatever color you want. Go ahead and hit enter. And all your words are now highlighted. Okay, I want to control up arrow back to the first of my paragraph. And you heard that yellow background. So let's say the student has to highlight a particular word. As the screen reader reads, it will actually tell you what word is highlighted. Let's say we need to bold a couple words. Now I can move one word at a time with control right arrow. Okay, let's say we want to bold powerful. I'm gonna sit on my control shift and right arrow one time. And I'm actually gonna control B to bold it. Okay, now let's go ahead and keep moving. We'll underline a word, control right arrow. Okay, control shift right arrow. And control U to underline. Let's go ahead and move another couple words and now we're going to italic, control right arrow. Select your word and control I to italicize. So that's how you, and it's a toggle, so control I will turn it on or off, bold, underline, etc. Okay, so now let's go ahead and control down arrow. Even if I was at the bottom of this paragraph, I'd still want to control down arrow because it moves me so thoroughly to the bottom of where I need to be or the top of the paragraph. Okay. Now, if you're not sure where you're at, insert tab always tells you exactly where you're at and insert T tells you in general, let's insert tab. So it tells me exactly what paragraph I'm at. Insert T is gonna tell me my document just in case I get lost because it's easy, get lost. And it tells me document one print. Now I can move through here and change every type of option that I want. Uh, so let's go ahead and go down and we're gonna move down one paragraph and we're gonna insert a picture. So I'm gonna control down arrow. I'm gonna hit enter and move that down. I'm gonna up arrow. And let's say I want to insert a picture here. So I'm going to insert clip art with alt N and then F. So Alt N, hit F. Okay, so I'm gonna hush up JAWS and I can actually type in what I want. Okay, and I'm gonna hit enter to populate Apple. Okay, and I'm gonna control enter on that. Okay. So I'm already going to tell you that has a couple hiccups, just as you saw. If enter does not work, just use control enter and it forces the issue because sometimes we need to force the issue with our script talking software to do what we want. Now I want you to go ahead and tab in to your list view of items. Okay, so here we are. I could right arrow and go through all my different options, but I want to show you a little bit more advanced command because enter is still not working here. I am going to try control enter on it and see if they've updated it yet. So I'm going to hit enter and you'll notice nothing happens. Now I'm going to try control enter. Okay, still nothing. It doesn't matter because here's how you force the issue. You're going to route your cursor. So if you're visual, you're actually going to see that mouse move from the center of my screen and it's going to fly over to where that object is that I want. And you're going to do that with caps lock left bracket or 
you're going to go ahead and do your insert left bracket. That was so easy. And you just saw the mouse fly across my page. Now what you want to do is you need to left click on this. If I wanted to save it, it would be caps lock nine and I could save it someplace else, but that's not what I wanna do. I wanna insert it into my document. So I'm gonna caps lock eight, okay? And it automatically clicked it. Now I'm going to go back to my PC cursor and I'm going to insert it. Okay, here we go. Caps lock semicolon, tab to my insert. There's my insert and now I'm gonna hit enter and the Apple inserts. Now, with your applications key, and that's typically two keys to the right of your space bar, if you do not have an applications key, you're gonna need to shift F10. Hit your applications key. And let's say I wanna change that size because that's a pretty large picture. I'm going to up arrow. If I go into format, that gives me a lot of options that I want, including size, but I want to be more direct about this, so I'm going to up arrow to size and position. And I'm going to hit enter on it. And here I am in my size and position. Okay, so I always tell kids, tab in and listen to the absolute value. Now mine is in centimeters, but if they were to listen to this, they're looking at about an eight by six, mm, six by six, I take that back, picture. And so what you're going to do is that's too large. The piece of paper is eight by 11. So once they understand their absolute values of height and width, they can actually do all N down to your height and change it. I'm going to do all N. Okay, this is at 100%, and if you tab twice, you're also going to hear lock aspect ratio. That means you only have to change one of these and both will adjust. Well, I want that about 30% because I want it a lot smaller, so I'm just going to type in 30, and I'm going to tab one time, and I'm going to hit enter. Now, I can also tell you I want to wrap text here. So if I control tab, I will move to wrap text. So I'm going to control tab. Okay. If I do not wrap the text, this is just going to be a solid object on the left hand side. So I'm going to tab in to adjust it. Okay, and then I'm going to right arrow to what I want. Square, because then I can actually right or left arrow and adjust the font on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter on that. Okay, now you think it immediately disappeared, but oh, there it is. Okay, and there is my picture. And so now I can go ahead and move it, so I'm just right or left arrowing, and it moves it around my page, okay? If I just sit on it, you actually see the picture move across my page, and it gives me the option of moving that picture where I want. Okay, let's go ahead and just sit on it and move it to the left and the picture and the words disappear because the picture is moving into place. Okay, now let's say I actually need to email this to my teacher. It's at the end of the class period, the teacher says, okay, everybody, I want you to email this. We're now going to go to the file. You need Outlook set up for this. We're going to hit Alt F to file, Z to share, tab one time, to your word and enter on it and Outlook will open. Now let's do the commands. Alt F, Z to share, tab one time to Word document. Okay, You could tab again to PDF, but almost always uh, teachers want Word documents, so you're going to hit enter on that and your Outlook will open. Great. Now while you're here, while you're here, you may have more than one account connected to your Outlook. If you do and you want to check to see which, uh, which one is sending, you want to go ahead and do, I love dismiss all, I'm just going to do Alt uh, L to remind to dismiss that, so I'm going to go ahead and Alt tab to my reminder that just popped up. And here we go. I'm alt tabbing through to it. And I'm alt A to dismiss. I am sure. Perfect. And now I'm back to my Outlook. So if you have calendar reminders, that's how you get rid of your reminders. 
Okay, so now I'm going, I'm back in my Outlook. I want to go to Alt-M to where I have my, who I'm writing from, Alt-M. Okay, so it's Denise M. Robinson at yourtechvision.com, but I can down arrow, I have six options here, and I can down arrow to anything else to have it send from. But I want to send it from Denise M. Robinson, so I'm happy with that, and I hit escape to get out. And now I'm down to two. Okay, I'm just going to send it to myself. Okay, and once you actually start typing in, it will automatically populate what's in your address book. So all you have to do is type the first couple of letters and hit enter to insert it. Now you're gonna to tab to your subject. Well, right now it says document one because I didn't save this. The great thing is you actually don't. Maybe this is just something the teacher wanted to do a quick survey of and just said type this out and send it in, but you don't need to save it. How cool is that? You can change the subject there. You can do a control A and type in a different words if you want, or, if you would have actually had enough time in the classroom, I will actually show you how to save this. You would have hit your F12 and then I will show you how to save it once I get out of my email. But you don't have to, that's the point. I'm gonna to continue to tab. You're gonna hear your attachment. There it is. Okay, and right there, of course, I would type something like, please see attached. I'd insert my uh, email or my address and then I would Alt S and that's what I'm gonna do. Alt S to send it right now and it's gone. Now, it's gone, but it's actually sitting in Outlook. Outlook is a client. You actually need to open Outlook in order for that email to send. So I'm hitting my Windows key and typing in Outlook. There's Outlook because my indexing is indexed. I'm hitting Enter. And it opens. Yep. Okay, and it automatically sends. Now, let's say you're, you have an error that comes up and it says, nope, you can't send for Outlook. Updates will do that. School filters will block that. No big deal. You can still use Outlook. So what we're going to do is, and I highly suggest, save the document because this will not work as easily, but it still works great. So let's say you're in there. Oh, look at there. There's my document that I just sent. Okay, so now I'm going to do Control N in Outlook. Okay. Once again, and I have the signature in here, is so if you're visual, you can actually see it. That's a whole other lesson on how to put your in your signature. But here I am. I'm back in my Outlook. I could do Alt M again to see who I'm sending from, but I don't need to. I'm just going to go ahead and type myself in there again and hit Enter. And I'm going to tab to Subject. Just work. Keep it easy. Now I'm gonna, in, I'm gonna actually attach a file here. So I'm in Outlook, you can do it a couple different ways. I'm just gonna show you one. Alt-H to message, A-F, attach, file. So I'm gonna Alt-H, A-F, to attach file. And there is the last thing I saved. This is the reason why I tell kids immediately save it because when you go to Outlook, it will actually be there. Tech Training 21 was actually the last thing I saved on my computer and there it is. So is all I have to do is hit enter and it will automatically insert. Let's say that's not it. I can hit B for browse or up arrow to browse, okay? I'm actually gonna show you that feature when I go back to uh, Word. So right now I am gonna go up arrow and it is gonna be text writing and I'm hitting enter. And it automatically inserts and attaches to your email. Tab and double check to make sure it did. Yep. Tab to message body edit, type please see attached and alt S to send. Okay, so it's that fast because those IMAPI issues do pop up. Okay, I'm gonna alt F4 out of my Outlook. Okay, now here I am. I need to save this. We're gonna hit F12 for save as. And it's populating nice and slowly, okay? And I could get a not responding. Yep, and there I am. But when you get a not responding, you wanna be patient and it will actually eventually populate. Alt tab to it because you probably lost focus of it. So I'm sitting on my alt and I'm tabbing to save as. Here we go. 
Okay. Edit unavailable type of text. It really did lose focus. So I'm going to hit escape out of it. Okay. And I'm going to hit F12 again. And I love how that lost focus. So I'm going to route my cursor because I need to deal with this issue. So I'm going to caps lock left bracket. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and do PC cursor to actually deal with this issue. Actually, I'm going to caps lock eight first. And it actually immediately pops into my dialog box, but I need to now get back to my PC cursor with caps lock semicolon. Okay. Now I have activated my box. So routing your cursors, using your PC cursor and your JAWS cursor to force things to happen when they're not acting correctly is really crucial. Okay, so let's say I want to make sure I'm in my documents. I want to Alt D. I am. At this point, I can hit E colon if I wanted to go on my E drive, H colon if I wanted to go to my H drive. I could type in folders or anything else, but I'm happy with that. So I'm going to do Alt N to jump back down to my file name. And if Alt N does not want to work, so I'm guessing there's an update occurring in my computer that's making it a little on ring. No big deal. We tab to it. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and Alt N. And there we are. So just tab a couple times, kick it into gear, and it works. So I'm just going to name this Apple, and I'm going to hit Enter and close. Okay, now I'm going to Alt F4 and close out of here. So I always tell kids, if you're looking for something, let's go back to the power of that Windows key. Hit your Windows key, and if you remember, it's called Apple. Start typing in Apple. Don't give up, down arrow. Okay, and there it is. I'm actually going to show you a faster way. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and open that so you can actually see that is the Apple document. There it is. I'm going to Alt F4, and I'm going to show you a different way to search for that. Hit your start key, and you're going to type in DOC colon. So you're actually directing your computer now to only look in documents for Apple. So hit your start key. D-O-C colon, and there it is. So visually, you're already seeing it pop up, pop up, but when your auditory kicks in, there it is, Apple Doc. You can do this with Excel and PowerPoint also, and you hit enter, and it populates. So you can tell your computer exactly what you want to do all the time. Okay, before we run out of time, I do want to show you some PowerPoint. So I'm going to Alt F4 and get out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close out of my Zoom. Now, PowerPoint, I'm hitting my start key and I'm going to type in PPT. Okay, because PowerPoint is an incredibly powerful program now with 365. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter on this. The first thing you want to do is color the background. If you're visual, you'll actually see on the right hand side, you have a huge pane that says designer ideas. It actually depends how your computer is set up. Mine is set up so the pane shows up. So it does not matter what design you put in here or pictures, your computer will actually help you design this. So you don't really don't need a speck of vision anymore. Well, you never needed it before, the placeholders, if you always uh, inserted your pictures within your placeholders, it always did perfectly. But now we have incredible design features. The first thing you want to do, and these, I'm just going to give you different options and then we're going to select different ones as we move through, hit your applications key. And I'm going to up arrow and you're going to listen to the B is format background. Okay, so I could have hit my applications key and B for background. I'm going to hit enter on that. And my background options open. Okay, so it tells me fill but button. Okay, I could up and down arrow at this point change gradient and whatnot. For beginners, I keep it simple. I'm going to go ahead and tab to color. There's my fill color. I'm going to hit space bar and open it. I always tell kids, I'm going to go ahead and up arrow to my primary colors. When they become more sophisticated, they can down arrow to their 10 columns of colors. But we keep it simple when we begin. So I'm going to up arrow to my primary colors. Typically, it's three times up arrow uh, in most programs, but it can be more. But what you do is you keep up arrowing until you hear the green option. 
thus far since they've created this program when you up arrow it is green at this point right or left arrow to the color that you actually want okay i'm just going to choose orange so i'm going to hit enter on that and visually you can immediately see your powerpoint changing what you want to do is tab to apply to all and you hit spacebar. Now, once you have done all this, you need to close this navigation pane because if you do not close it and you try to go back into it, you're not going to move from your slide and it causes issues. So always control space and C to close. Now it pops me back to my slide. I'm going to tab in to add a title. And I'm keeping it easy. I'm going to hit escape twice to get out of my placeholder. I'm going to tab twice to my subtitle placeholder. I'm going to type in my name. Of course, you'd want to do it formally. I'm not teaching you how to do this properly, but just how to get in and out of all your placeholders. Escape twice. Now, when I want a new slide, I'm going to control M. M as in more. Now, your most beginners typically accidentally do control N. That just starts a new presentation. Just control or alt F4 out of that, and you'll pop right back to where you want to be. Now, we have one place uh, holder here, but most teachers want two content. So I want you to hit your applications key or insert F10 if you don't have an applications key. And I want you to go ahead and go down to layout or L. Right arrow. Okay. So title and content, I actually want to go down to two content. So I'm left arrowing and down to two content and enter. Oh, and there's my kid. I'm just going to go ahead and hush this kid up. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and tab into my title. Type in title. I'm going to escape twice. I'm actually going to tab twice to the next text placeholder. Okay, I'm going to type in stuff, enter. It adds bullets, enter. Because a teacher wants information about what you're going to uh, use as a picture. So now I'm going to escape twice out of this and I'm going to go to my other object placeholder. Escape twice continue to tab and it tells you okay. now i have nothing in here so now i'm going to insert a picture with alt n and then p alt n then p okay so i know i have more pictures in my e drive so i'm going to do an alt d type in e colon and it immediately opens my e drive I could also do it here, E colon, but I want, the most powerful is you always need to go to your Alt D so you actually know where you are at, so Alt D. I'm gonna do E colon, enter. Most people, I'm gonna tell you, will already do PIC and down arrow to pictures, but if you go into your pictures, you are going to go into your pictures, but I am not. Once again, I have multiple, multiple drives. I'm going to do Alt N now because it is faster to do. If you know where you're going, just you can literally stay in Alt N and just tell it what you want to open. I'm going to go ahead and type in PIC, T U R E S to pictures and enter. I love it. It doesn't want to find it. No big deal. Alt D because I just did a major update at my computer, so it's being on ring. No big deal. Alt D. Tab to my search, and I'm going to type in pictures up in my search box, and it should be populating. There it is. Okay, now I'm going to tab around to my list view, space bar on my pictures, and hit enter and open. So I am going to tell you when your computer is doing updates in the background, you are going to get little hiccups like that, but there's always ways around to uh, fix that. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and alt in, and I'm going to show you how you can actually populate what you want. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my nephew in here and enter. Perfect. And there is my wonderful nephew and his uh, past girlfriend, sweet couple. So now it's inserted, but let's actually pick how cool this can look now. First of all, you need to alt text it. So hit your applications key. 
It now has, 365 has a, um, an actual item called edit alt text. It's the hotkey A to get there. So I'm going to hit A. Okay, and it says, uh, and you, this is the reason why you want Braille displays connected, a person sitting at the table with a birthday cake. That's pretty good. But I'm just going to put Tyler and Amanda. Okay, I'm going to get rid of a person sitting at the table with a birthday cake. That's very cool because if you tab around and you do not have this alt texted, it's either going to say object or it's going to say a number. So always alt text your information. Close the navigation pane. Control space and see to close. Now, what you're going to notice is if you're visual, that whole design pane completely disappeared. So I did this for, to show you that. Yeah, it disappears. How do you get that back? Okay, you could Alt-Q. If you don't know the power of Alt-Q, you can actually go to Alt-Q and ask your computer anything. The problem is it doesn't tell you the hotkey. So I'm just going to Alt-Q. Okay, and I'm actually going to type in design. And it populates design ideas. Okay, so that's the fast way. I could hit enter on that right now, and your design ideas pane would immediately open. Now I'm going to show you the hot key to get there, though. Like I said, Alt Q, it's a lifesaver, but it doesn't tell you the hot key commands, so you can go ahead and use them even faster. I'm escaping out of here. Now I'm going to show you how to get there with the design option. Alt G to your design and D to design ideas, and it repopulates. Now to get there, you have to hit F6. And I'm gonna hush them up, and it gives you many different ideas. I'm just gonna hit enter on that, but I could down arrow through, through all the other options. As soon as I hit enter on that, it immediately changes to a beautiful outline. So even if you inserted a teeny, 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 tiny little picture, it doesn't matter. Just get to that design idea, go down and choose them. I'm already gonna tell you, it doesn't read a lot of information. Listen, see? And it just says design idea. Well, that's not very great right now. I guarantee you that will improve just like everything else. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you hit enter on. Any of them will be perfect. Now what you are noticing is you are stuck in that navigation pane. I could shift F6, but you need to just close the navigation pane and it will immediately move you back to your slide view. So control space, C to close. And you're immediately back into your title slide. So incredibly powerful. Okay, so at this point, if you have any questions, please do uh, go ahead. You can control H to go to your chat box. And if you do not, then of course, I will save this audio and ship it out. Are there any questions? You may go ahead and control H if there are. Okay, great. And if there's not, great lesson, you guys. Uh, this audio will be going out so you will know more. I'm gonna go ahead and stop my sharing screening and end. Talk to you later. Bye.